What's private equity valuation about? Well, it's about time travel. I'll tell you exactly what I mean. Good. Well, let's start with uh, our valuation analysis. So what this uh, module is about is about the private equity approach to valuing companies. And if we look at our first uh, slide here in the presentation, what you can see is we have basically a binary choice. We can go one way or we can go the other way. And what that's determined by is the following criteria is whether the nature of the company is changing during a period or whether it's remaining broadly the same. And in the case of a large company object of a buyout, the company remains broadly the same. The, the fund manager may make it more efficient, may do spin-offs, but the company's nature remains broadly the same. And that means that the valuation methods adopted are the so-called classic methods um, under which you would use a complicated LBO valuation model. If we take the other, the other routes where the company's nature is changing during the period, that means we cannot use the same technique. And, we have to use, and this is consistent with venture capital type investments and growth type investments. And in this case, we need to use a different technique to take into account the fact that the company's nature is changing. Another way to look at um, the relationship between the valuation techniques and the company is to consider this slide showing the life cycle of a company. On the bottom left, it starts as a startup or a seed capital. It eventually becomes a venture capital investment as it goes up the curve. Then it goes into the expansion phase and finally flattens out when it becomes a mature company. And if we look at the techniques we're able to use, essentially we can use the so-called classic techniques, like such as DCF or the application of a simple multiple in the period from late stage expansion through to the initial decline. Beyond that, we can't do those, use that method because the metrics not, may not be there and the company's characteristics do not allow for that. So what I'm going to concentrate on is the, um, the left-hand side of the table, which is to do with the venture and the growth stage of a company's life. Let's uh, take for a start some definitions which we need to know in order to be able to perform a valuation. So pre-money valuation, this refers to the valuation of a company before I come along as a fund manager. So it's the value of the company just sitting there doing its normal operations and that's referred to as the pre-money valuation by fund managers. The post-money valuation is the value of the company immediately after the investment's been made. So after my private equity fund has invested in the company, the company's valuation is going to change, it's going to increase, and that, that, that new value is known as the post-money value. Money out, so this refers to the amount of the investment I may make as a fund manager that is not going into the company uh, as a capital increase, but it's more to buy the existing shares from the existing shareholders, so the money will go into their pockets rather than into the company and be put to work in the company. On the other hand, money in is the amount of money that goes into the company as a kind of capital injection, and that is the money that's actually put to work in the company. And in the case of venture and growth investments, most of the investment amount will be take the form of a money in type of investment, but many private equity deals will be a combination of both money out uh, and money in in many cases. The hurdle rate is simply the target return that I'm looking to earn on my fund, and that's determined by the original agreements of my fund, and it's determined by what I've promised to the investors in the fund. It's not determined mathematically, it's determined empirically according to practice. And then finally, the cash multiple simply refers to the fact that for every dollar that I invest when I make my investment, after I sell the company, how many dollars will I get back on that? And the ratio of the amount of dollars I get from selling and the amount of selling to the amount that I put in is known as the cash multiple. So here is the, um, the point where we really understand how we look at the company in order to value it. And it's what I call double vision or time travel. Because what do I have to do? As a fund manager, what I have to do is I have to visualize how the company is going to look in the future. So what I do is I assume that I inject a certain amount of money into the company. That money is then put to work. The years pass, the company develops, the company changes. And then after, let's say, five years, the company is very different from where it was, also because of the money that we put to work and the efforts of the management. So the company's changed itself quite a bit. And we go to that point in time 
and we say, well, at this point in time, what could I sell the company for? And who would be interested in buying that company? Now, whoever's interested in buying that company themselves is going to look at the future potential of the company. So what I have to do is I have to put my money in the company in year zero. I have to travel forwards in time to year five. I have to imagine what the company looks like and imagine what the company would be like for somebody trying to buy it who's look at themselves looking forward to years 6, 10, 6 to 10 and onwards. So it's a kind of double vision. And then at that point, I figure out how much the company will be bought for. I take that amount and then I travel back in time to today to obtain my post money valuation in year zero today. So I travel forwards in time and then I travel back in time. So this is the time travel aspect of private equity valuation. Enjoying the program? Well, please subscribe to my channel. It costs you nothing and it would mean a lot to me. Thanks very much. So now we can come to the calculation that is shown here. And I've divided it into the static calculation and the dynamic calculation. So let's go through the static calculation. So the company today is worth 4 million euros the way it is, as if I didn't exist, ignoring my investment. Let's say that the owner of the company or the management of the company would like to have a million in investment in order to take the company to the next level. This will help fund its expansion. And so under the static valuation, this means the pre-money valuation is 4 million and the post-money valuation will be the 4 million plus the 1 million that I've injected. And that would allow me to get an ownership of 20%, which is simply arithmetically dividing my 1 million into 1 plus 4, and that gets me 20%. Of course, the limitations of this method, which is often used, is that it sort of implicitly assumes that my one million is just going to sit in the bank for the rest of the life of the company and is not going to be put to work. So in that sense, the static valuation is incorrect. So let me turn now to the dynamic valuation and work through that. So the company is worth four million today, same as before. We inject the one million, it's the same as before. But now what we do is we start our time travel we figure out the effect of putting that one million in and putting it to work. So as the years go by, the company grows faster, that one million is used by the company, and then we get to year five and we estimate that we can sell that company for 50 million euros because the company is doing much better, it's bigger, it's better. And my target return is 35% a year, that's my internal, my internal kind of target on my investments. So now I can apply this other method so if in five years the company's worth 50 million euros, in today's money, discounted back at my 35%, it's worth 11 million euros. And this is a new post-money valuation. Notice that it's different than the, the post-money valuation under the static method, which was only 5 million. In a way, it's a miracle because I've created 6 million euros out of nothing, in a sense. And this means that I would be able to accept an ownership percentage of actually 8.3%, if I believe that these things will come to pass in the future. So this is the dynamic method of valuation. Of course, I would prefer to get 20%, but the calculation and the valuation is shown here. So basically, to summarize, it's time travel. I put the money in the company, I go to the future, I see what the companies can be sold for, and I come back to today. Now, you may say this is a very difficult exercise. Yes, it is difficult, and private equity fund managers do often get it wrong. But we like to think that we are probably better at figuring this out than the average member of the population and probably even better than the average member of the financial community. So that is the essential skill of the fund manager in terms of valuation is to figure this out.